And we're back live from ThingsCon 2017 from Amsterdam. And together with me here is uh, Kars. You did a workshop uh, yesterday, you said. Uh, uh, yep. What was it about? About machine learning for IoT designers. That is uh, quite a topic. Yes, so... Uh, Do elaborate. Uh, well, uh, yeah, so that's a big buzzword, of course, of course machine learning. Um, the workshop was about uh, teaching uh, designers a hands-on tool set with which they can uh, uh, play around with machine learning in their own uh, practice and have uh, a machine learning algorithm control uh, connected product. To what end? Well, first of all, to uh, get a handle on what machine learning is in the first place, because um, a lot of us are talking about it. There's also some concern about it in society. Uh, designers have a role to play in, uh, in that uh, conversation, but to be able to kind of take responsibility for uh, uh, for how machine learning is applied, you need to first understand the technology. And the, f the thing about designers is that the way they learn is not so much by reading stuff or anything, you know, through theoretical knowledge, but it's much more about uh, acquiring uh, what is called tacit knowledge. It's like riding a bike, that's tacit knowledge, right? You can't read a book and then you can re uh, ride a bike. It's the same for design knowledge. So we wanted to give them something that they can play around with in a hands-on way. And by doing that, you get a better understanding of the nature of machine learning and what makes it different from uh, traditional software. Right. So, so um, as I understood, I thought uh, that machine learning is quite quite complex. Uh, but are there are there easy uh, ways just to to fool around with it a little bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's uh, um, so of course the algorithms themselves are super complex, and you need to be a data scientist to kind of to to understand them. But uh, that's not the point, right? For designers, it's about the application of the technology. And the nice thing about machine learning as a field is that a lot of the work is being shared in the academic community, but also in the, in the software development community. So there's a lot of algorithms that are just out there. And what we did in the workshop was we took a tool called Wackinator, which is basically a, a GUI, a, a user interface with buttons, wrapped around one of these machine learning algorithms. Uh, so that you can train it to do things just by giving it some some examples yourself. Right. So it's it's still a little bit uh, um, uh, high level. So so, yes. uh, so if we talk about certain examples, what are what, what kind of things were people doing during the workshop? So in the workshop, we gave them a uh, Arduino with uh, two light sensors on it and an RGB LED. So it's super simple, and this Arduino is connected to uh, the network. And the machine learning algorithm is running on uh, your laptop. It's just an open source software that you download and run on your laptop. And what they could do, then do is uh, train uh, the Arduino to do something with the RGB LED, turn a particular color, for example, by giving some uh, uh, inputs on the light sensors. So uh, to do a gesture, train it to recognize a gesture, for example, covering and uh, uncovering it several times, that would trigger uh, a particular behavior. And the point was that normally you would write code to achieve such behavior. And here you just simply give it some examples, literally an example of, okay, this is the gesture that I need, and this is what you should do. And then you train the model, tell it to run, and then it just starts doing stuff. Right, That's because all. that is what machine learning is. It's basically just giving a lot of examples and, yes. uh, and patterns, and then yes. it will learn from that and exactly. understand how to exactly. repeat it. And this is a very simple, primitive setup but you're using the same technologies as uh, uh, the stuff that's deployed in commercial settings and uh, at large scale. Right. So, so that was the, 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 the workshop in a nutshell. And whilst looking to these people and talking to them while they were doing the workshop, but uh, uh, were the people there had a, a wow uh, experience yeah, or, yeah. Or, or, or a brilliant no, insight? Yeah, yeah, there were high fives, but uh, you know, once you start teaching this thing to do even stupid simple things like uh, uh, an RGB LED, we called the workshop uh, prototyping the useless butler. So the useless butler was this thing that is absolutely useless, but it's like an assistant, right? That the, the tech scene is talking about a lot, like all these voice assistants and stuff. It's the same principle. And it's very liberating to just have all this technology that is just off the shelf stuff. You combine it and you can achieve effects that are very similar to uh, the things that the tech giants uh, are achieving uh, nowadays. So were there people that already had epiphany uh, of a, a new product or service? Is it, okay, wow, if I can do this, I can do that, and I can come up with... That's uh, a good question. I'm not sure, you should ask them. But you probably but uh, so. were eavesdropping and... Uh, yeah, no, let, let me put it this way. I, I do hope that that's the case, that, that this will help people think about 
the technology in a in a in a more concrete way. So you will also end up coming up with more uh, uh, more realistic, but also more uh, interesting ideas, as opposed to just reading a Wired article about it, and then you're very limited in what you can imagine about it. Right. So this this was uh, mostly an approach from uh, well based on the machine learning and just give that to to the designers yes. to learn and understand what you can do with it. Mm -hmm. um, one of the topics here. This ThingsCon is also uh, how to to basically design uh, by default uh, with uh, with the integration of security and yes. uh, ethics and things yes. like that. And yeah. were they part of the workshop as well? Did you did you talk about that? Not e explicitly, but uh, I mean, there's lots of ethical concerns around machine learning. Uh, there's security concerns. Uh, there's concerns about what will happen to jobs, all that stuff. And like I said, designers have a role to play in ethically applying these technologies in products and services. And they need to be able to think about, okay, how does this impact people's lives? But they also need to be, uh, uh, be able to think about the technology and to talk about the technology with other stakeholders in a project. And so, again, just getting some practical knowledge about it is, I think, vital for them to be able to have that conversation in the first place. Sure, sure. But you limited uh, the, the, the workshop to, to basically how machine learning works. And yes, you, you it's very you, fundamental. Yeah, so that's the first step. And the yes. next step would be, okay, but if you have this and you can do yeah. these kind of things, what, it, what are the impacts? What are the yeah. ethical impacts? What are the security impacts, et cetera, et cetera? I think, I think it will help on the one hand to maybe uh, understand that some concerns are overblown. Uh, that machine learning is, is still uh, quite limited in some regards. But on the other hand, you will maybe see uh, uh, that other concerns uh, should get more attention than they do right now. Um, so for example, you, from, from this workshop, you will experience the fact that machine learning really is a black box. You give inputs with outputs, and then you train it, and then it starts doing stuff. But what's happening inside is totally opaque. You, you can't open it up, you can't look at code or anything. And I think that's a huge challenge for designers. They hate that. But to appreciate that, to appreciate the fact that that really is the case in a very fundamental way, that you can't even go to a program and then ask them, okay, how does this algorithm, how does this model do the thing that it does right now? Even they can't, won't be able to tell you. And that's a massive, massively different situation from traditional software. It, it really requires a complete rethink of how we design certain things. Right. All right. So uh, uh, this year you talked about machine learning and, and yeah. IoT. So what is going to be the topic uh, next year? Well, I, I, I think you know I, I, I am very concerned about the social social impact of uh, of these technologies. I'm also organizing people around these uh, these issues, like uh, um, uh, other designers and programmers around. Okay, how how can we collectively also uh, make a, a positive uh, contribution to to how these technologies are rolled out? So I'd like to maybe next year talk about that. How do we organize uh, programmers and designers to take collective action in that regard? Because a lot of the uh, discussion around it really often comes down to, well, as a designer, you shouldn't do any bad things, right? Well, that's nice, but, but when I'm part of a big company, how much influence do I have in the first place, right? So that's, for me, a big question at the moment. Yeah, yeah, and it's also, I mean, uh, not only with big companies, but sometimes you have limited time or resources. And, of course. Uh, yeah. uh, and I uh, uh, skip the privacy part because uh, I don't want to look at it. Uh, sure, uh, sure. Uh, so as long as it looks good on the outside, then, uh, and, uh, maybe, and the next version I will fix it, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and it will never happen. Yeah, it's very hard to do uh, this, these things responsibly in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in our current industry, the way it's organized. So, uh, so it's important that, that we get other institutions that really take responsibility for these issues, I think. Hmm. But you're an optimist? I'm an optimist, yes, absolutely. That's why I'm also organizing people, is because I believe we can actually make a positive difference. Uh, so, you know, they, 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 these, all these technologies have massive potential, uh, and, but it's up to us to really kind of uh, uh, make that happen, the, the positive uh, sides. Perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for watching. Uh, there was another episode of uh, the uh, live interviews we do from ThingsCon in uh, Amsterdam. So stay tuned for some other guests.